I'm Lee Patrick Sullivan here at the Washington, D.C. Auto Show. I'm with Pete Savagian from General Motors. And, Pete, you're the go-to guy when it comes to electric motors over at General Motors, correct? That's right. I'm uh, director of our electric motor engineering activity. And, and most people don't realize that a lot of these auto companies, they don't make their own electric motors. They buy from outside sources. But General Motors had an announcement today that you're getting back into the electric motor business. Yeah, that's right. We've announced today that we're making a major uh, expansion in our White Marsh, uh, Maryland plant uh, to now manufacture the electric traction motors that are in our hybrid and electric vehicles. So when people hear electric motor, I'm sure they the first thing they think of is the Chevy Volt or some sort of electric vehicle. But there is an electric assist motor that is in the hybrid vehicles, and that's what you're going to be concentrating on first, correct? Yeah, our, our motor activity is cadence to work with our vehicle product activity, and we make our, our decision that electric motors have become so important as the vehicles become more electrified, we really need to get into that core business and drive the technology to do the things that we need uh, our vehicles to do for our customers, and that is be more efficient, be smoother, uh, stronger, faster, and more affordable. And a first application is for a hybrid system, so it, the motors that we're uh, going to put in the uh, White Marsh plant are for the next generation uh, rear wheel drive two mode hybrid system. Will we see other plants converting over to um, electric motors or are we just sticking with White Marsh for right now? Well right now we're, we're going to use the White Marsh plant. The White Marsh uh, facility uh, has been manufacturing our first generation uh, two mode rear wheel drive product. Uh, that's a great labor force there. They've done really well for us. Uh, and so now we're going to upgrade that facility into the next generation product and then bring in additionally the electric motor production. Now this isn't the first time General Motors has made an electric motor. You made the electric motor for the EV1. Uh, what, any of that technology carrying over to this new plant? Yeah, I mean, elements of our design methods and our control methods uh, date back to the EV1 and even before. I mean, GM's been making electric motors for a long time. If you look at our electromotive division, we've made trains for many years. Uh, and then uh, we were in the refrigerator business at one time. Uh, EV1 capitalized on, on a lot of that. Uh, and so uh, engineers even such as myself and maybe uh, uh, 10 or 15 other folks uh, actually have their roots in the development of the EV1 motors. Uh, now working on motors for uh, next generation of vehicles. I actually owned one of those Frigidaire uh, refrigerators made by General Motors. Uh, any chance that we will see the electric motors ending up in the Chevy Volt? Uh, maybe one day uh, in a different product, but the Chevy Volt uses electric machines that were uh, engineered in large part by General Motors, but we have those manufactured by another company. And what's next uh, in, in line for um, the electric motor uh, division of General Motors? Well, uh, we're working on uh, all kinds of elements of technology to make the motors uh, uh, more affordable. We're trying to minimize the use of uh, rare earth magnets, uh, for instance. Uh, so that, that's on the front of our mind is how to get the most out of that. We've uh, made major engineering investments in our uh, computational design facilities for that in, in Michigan. We also made major investments in our validation facilities so that we can uh, validate these motors to understand that they're, they're going to deliver bulletproof reliability in the application. So we've got great assurance that these motors will last uh, not just one lifetime, but maybe two or three lifetimes in the application. And by lifetime, I mean a 200,000 mile lifetime, 15 years of continuous use. So we've got to make sure that uh, uh, for General Motors, we're trying to make the world's best vehicles. We've got to have the world's best electric motors for them, because increasingly, these vehicles are going to have one or two large electric motors to, to power them. What does it mean for an internal combustion engine to have an electric motor assist when it comes to miles per gallon? Uh, how, how much does it help that engine? Yeah, uh, to, to take a, a regular vehicle as a baseline and then consider a full hybrid, for instance, uh, we could improve efficiencies uh, 50, 60 percent uh, for city driving, maybe uh, 10 or 20 percent uh, in, when driving on the highway. It's not just about hybrids now, though, uh, Lee. We're talking about electrified vehicles where major portions of the energy in the car are not just coming out of the fuel tank, but actually coming out of the electrical grid. And of course, the electrical grid has got a diversity of energy sources. Many of them can be renewable. So we're talking about now plug-in hybrid electric vehicles where maybe 20% or 30% of the energy it uses to drive the car comes from the grid or even extended range electric vehicles like the Chevy Volt, or maybe 70 or 80% uh, in use uh, from
for the average driver will come off the grid and only 20 or 30 percent out of the fuel tank. And when that happens, the electric motor becomes much more prominent uh, in, in the drive character, in the cost, in the mass, and the efficiency of the, of the vehicle. All right, Pete Savagian from General Motors, thank you for joining us here. Okay. And uh, thanks for the announcement. General Motors is back into the electric motor business. From the Washington, D.C. Auto Show in Washington, I'm Lee Patrick Sullivan, Clean Skies News.